Okay, this how-to video is going to show you how to uh, use the min-max propagation delay rule inside the Cadence PCB tools. So these are our length matching rules that we can define specifically on a, a pin pair object or on a, a net based object. I and mean, usually a pin pair object would be better for this type of thing. So in this scenario, I've got um, an FPGA, I've got four memory devices, I've got some uh, termination resistors at the end. And my signal integrity engineer has said that I've got to have a, a specific length um, and they all must match within a certain tolerance um, from the termination resistors to the final um, uh, memory device. So what I want to do is, is, is create a rule for this. So what I can do is I can uh, go to the worksheet in Constraint Manager and create something called a pin pair, which would effectively uh, allow me to specify a specific object from, from here to here. So the resistor network to the IC, uh, you break the net into the individual pin pairs. So you could have a pin pair between these two ICs, between these two ICs, between these two ICs, between these two ICs. So you can actually split the net up into the different object sets and then define rules for it or length matching rules for it. So we've got a setup and constraints. We'll go to the uh, the, the electrical workbook, net, routing, and then min match propagation delay worksheet. There's the nets that I'm interested in. So I'm literally just going to do a right mouse button, create something called a pin pair. Let's make sure we're not in an active command first. So right mouse button, create pin pair. So here you'll see all the different object types from that complete net. So I'm going to pick a bit for U10 to RM1 pin 8 and click OK. So initially I get a, an info warning, basically just basically just says that any pin pairs that aren't explicitly constrained will be removed from Constraint Manager when it's closed. So I could cl click OK here. If I was to then close Constraint Manager and then relaunch Constraint Manager, you'll find that that pin pair has been moved because I didn't add a constraint to it. So just bear that in mind. Um, so right mouse button create pin pair and we'll go there through that again um, you can obviously hide this message if you don't want to don't want to see this every single time it's your choice so I'll create the other for uh, the other two now uh, pin pairs so you tend to go into RM1 So once I've got that, what I need to do is set the specific rules for that. So I want a minimum value um, of 10 and a maximum value of 12. And you do this on the actual pin pair object itself. Um, if you did it on the net, um, it would create it for all the pin pairs for that net based object. And I don't want that in this scenario. So, so once I've got that, um, I'm looking at these and saying, well, why are these yellow? I've actually rooted the net, so I'm a bit of a strange indicator. But the rule set isn't enabled as well, so we need to make sure that the rule set is enabled. So the, the column header being yellow is a, is a good indication that the rule set isn't turned off. There's a couple of ways to do this. We can do this from analyze, analysis modes, look at the electrical and look for propagation delay. Obviously, that's the object there. There's information on the propagation delay on the right hand side of the GUI, um, and you've got options to enable it there. So I can do it one way there, or I can also just right click here and choose analysis mode. And then if we then analyze the design, you'll see that I get some reds and greens. So some are meeting, green are meeting the constraints, red aren't meeting the constraints. So I've got a couple that are probably potentially too short here. Um, so if we go back to the main canvas window, I'm getting some DRC errors. Obviously hover over the DRC error, you get the rule set and the issue. So I can then add some delay here. So if we go into etch edit mode, hover over one of the nets themselves, and then do something called delay tune. And then I can then choose the delay tune and I get the, the heads up display in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. If I zoom in here, I also get this kind of stipple pattern that's kind of indicating. So the stipple pattern means it's not meeting it. It is meeting it. And if I go too far, you'll find I've got the stipple pattern again. Um, so I'm not meeting it again. So you've got um, a little bit of scope here to, to, to decide how you want to do this, whether you want to do it from the heads up display or from just a graphical representation on the on the track itself. So we'll do that one and we'll do the same here. So let's do a delay tune here. Both of those bumps are now uh, sorted out the delay. I'm meeting the constraints. I'm not seeing any DRC errors. If we come back to Constraint Manager, you can see just to confirm that that's all like that. That's all good to go.